Time is a 9-0 run for the Comets to start the second extra session. Pressure full court from Houston. Easy has it. Gets help from Ferdinand. Ferdinand all the way to the basket. That's exactly what Candy Harvey wants Ferdinand to do. So accomplished, really, around the hoop. Has many different ways to take it up to the rim. That one was easy for Ferdinand. Oh, yeah. Candy Harvey called the timeout, tried to regroup. Blew that one up, and it worked perfectly. Marie Ferdinand, one thing I know about her, she's so young. This is her second year in this league, but she finishes so well and is not afraid to take it inside. She's only 5'9", she's so strong, so athletic, and her quickness gets herself open, but she finishes so well every time she takes it in. And she ran into an illegal screen set by Tiffany Johnson. Johnson whistled for the foul. Ferdinand didn't even look back on that one. She knew it was going in. A nice soft touch got the roll to go. First turnover of the game for either team. Here's Dedek. Oh, the pass inside to Williams. Dedek's trying to make the extra pass in this game. Last touch by Houston. Van Chancellor doesn't agree. And the full house here at the compact center. They may be swaying, swaying the officials here a little bit. They're going to have a little conference. Yeah, this is one of the best crowds in the league. They definitely get behind their team, and I think they were a big factor in that double overtime game. Interesting, though, because Adrian Goodson started to walk back up the court as if it had gone off of Utah, and then she realized that they might not take it away from him, so she turned back around, and I'm not sure what they're going to do here, and Van Chancel wants have a jump an ball. explanation. They're going to have a jump ball, so... Van Chancellor thought for sure it was last touch by Utah. So they're going to jump it up. The designated jumper checks in for Houston as Michelle Snow is getting more and more playing time here late in the season and in the playoffs. She checks in, but now the officials are going to say you can't come in yet. Well, they're going to leave Snow on the court. Dedek is going to jump it up against Tina Thompson. Dedek wins it back. AZ. Oh, stolen by Rita Williams. She is lobbying for more playing time. The pass to Swoops. Couldn't convert. Cheryl Swoops scoreless here. 0 for 3 from the floor. Dedek takes it in strong. Too strong. Offensive foul. That was tough. Dedek. Couldn't get herself stopped. Ferdinand found her, but she just could not stop herself from running into Tina Thompson. That's a smart heads up play by Tina to get over there and stand her ground. Rita Williams. Thompson. Thompson. That's short. Tina has it. Certainly nerves an issue here in game three, the elimination game. Well, I'm sure this is do or die in this game, and both teams with desperation. Ferdinand Williams, that's a tough spot, but she scores from tough spots. Oh. Houston had cut off every inch of that baseline, and somehow Natalie Williams squeezed herself through, and the difference for her is that she's a left-handed shooter, so she was able to go up with the left hand. Well, they forgot to take care of behind the backboard. Right. Thompson wants to work on Williams. Ferdinand helps trying to strip it, ball on the floor. Snow for Swoops, five on the shot clock. Good luck by Swoops. Rita Williams scores again. Utah had done such a great job with the help side D, but they forgot about Rita Williams, and that was just great court awareness by Rita to see the opening. Dedek inside could score. Rita Williams already with seven points, a perfect three for three from the floor, and here she is with the ball, and Houston has a one-point lead. Swoops. Swoops all the way. No. Ferdinand, Utah wants the run. Ferdinand pulls up inside the strike. Nothing there. Snow with the rebound. And that was a quick shot by Utah. Marie Ferdinand, it looked as though she was open, but she was fading a little bit. I'm sure Candy Harvey had mentioned, again, that they wanted her to take it in a little bit more. She probably should have held that back. She had a full shot clock to work with. Swoops. Arcane left open. Can't hit. Dedek, another rebound. 
Both teams looking as though they're rushing the shots a little bit. Neither team shooting very well, right around 33%. Dedek for three, yes. Her first of the playoffs, her third of the season. Got some range, the big 7-2 Polish player. She's three of eight now, including playoffs and regular season. Not afraid to put it up out there. Well, you learn to shoot from outside in Europe. Dedek cashing in. Putting Utah back on top by two. Here's Snow, got Dina up in the air. Thompson, turn around. Good shot. That was excellent ball movement between Snow and Tina Thompson. They read it perfectly, but they knew they couldn't take it up against Dedek. They had to find the openings against Natalie Williams. Dedek trying to move. Baseline on Snow. Found Williams for two more. Well, Eric, we saw those two working together in practice so well. Every single opportunity was Natalie Williams and Margot Dedek. Dedek, as big as she is, she's actually a, a very good assist player. Great hands. Nine points for Williams. No points for Swoops. Trying to change that. Over five from the floor. Now, speaking of change, she had to change her shot on that one. That's what the presence of 72 Margot Dedek does. It makes you change your shot and take shots you might not normally take. Dedek, lazy pass. Intercepted by Arcane, trying to take it right to the basket, and she does. We're tied at 18. The double fist pump. Arcane gets so fired up. The Brazilian, part of that national team. Easy. Ferdinand. Ferdinand using that speed. Too strong. Williams there again for two more. 11 points for Natalie Williams, and it's a two-point Utah lead. Well, they are out-rebounding the Thomas right now, 14 to 10, doing a great job on the boards, and Natalie Williams in particular. She had more offensive boards in the last game than she did defensive boards. There's Swoops, trying yet again, her shot challenged again. Over six, AZ. Goodson, has to touch the ball in a while. Here she comes and takes it to the basket. She's fouled, she'll go to the line. Stars by two. First half. It's been close. Arcane tied it up for the moment. Close here in Houston. You won't believe who we've got this time. I play ping pong with Janine Garofalo, and I make the first couture donut with Mark Israel. The Isaac Mizrahi Show, tomorrow night at 10.30. Week at Sears, all screen tees and jeans are on sale. Where do top brands, great prices, and guarantees come together for back to school? Sears. Where else? Now that Conversations from the Edge airs weekly, only on Oxygen, host Carrie Fisher is on her best behavior. We'll be right back. I'll show the press. Go quit, thank you. <laughs> You're very intense, which I like. I'm obnoxious. I get on people's nerves. Oh, hey. Join Carrie Fisher for TV's <laughs> most wicked weekly hour. <laughs> I wonder if this is okay to tell. <laughs> this is really fun. Watch Conversations from the Edge, Sunday night at 10, only on Oxygen. Back here in Houston, 
You know, they were expecting the fans to give them a little boost, and they got that in game two, and they're hoping for more here in game number three. 8-11 to go in the first half. Cheryl Swoops presented with the MVP trophy. Second time in her career before this game. You see the numbers. Cheryl 0 for 6. The rest of the team, including Rita Williams, keeping Houston close in this one. Right now, Adrian Goodson to the line, looking for her first point of this game. Still looking. Well, Free throw shooting was still a problem, really, for Utah this morning when Candy Harvey said, what are you going to change? Well, you got to change. we got to make some free throws. Okay. They didn't make them. How do we change <laughs> making those free throws? And they tried to work on it a little bit. Shot just under 70% in the game, but they're just not going to get it done against a team like Houston. They're two for three in this game. First point for Goodson. And it's a three-point lead for the Stars. Now Williams for Swoops. Utah's fallen into a matchup zone. They brought in Samika Randall. Arcane beats the zone. She has six. Edek. Off of Ferdinand. Thought about it. And three-second violation whistled against Utah. Houston will take over when we come back. Jenneth Arcane took over in game two. Trying to take over Houston here in game three. Buick's hottest closeout ever ends September 3rd. 0% APR for five years. On Century and LeSabre, ranked best in initial quality by J.D. Power & Associates. On Buick's hot-selling new rendezvous. Now take 3,000 cash back or 0% APR on every new 2002 Buick. Five years of interest refinancing ends September 3rd. See your nearest Buick dealer today. Who do you dream of being? Do you dream of being the next Weatherspoon? Do you dream of being the next Swoops? Or the next Holdsclaw? Well, here's a thought. How about just being the first you instead? Lady Foot Locker, once again, proud sponsor of the WNBA. Get your game on, girl. <clears throat> How'd you find this place? Yahoo. Mm. Wait, wait, wait. What? How did you learn how to talk? Yahoo. not good with the ladies like you said her all right try this on her all right i'm paul you have beautiful eyes uh, hi i'm paul and you have beautiful eyes i'd love to take you out sometime love to take you out sometime so how much so how much with a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down make it a bud light Well, let's hope Haley has a padded seat. His comments, or her comments, down by one. I really don't know. I, I have no idea. Down by one. Upcoming games in the WNBA playoffs, Eastern Conference Finals, all set now. New York at Washington, game one. That's 8 o'clock on Thursday on ESPN2. Western Conference Finals, Los Angeles will either be here in Houston or in Utah. Thursday night, 10 o'clock, also on ESPN2. Then on Saturday, Western Conference Finals, game two, 4 o'clock on NBC. That's at L.A. And then the Eastern Conference Finals, game two, Washington at New York, 8 o'clock, tip on ESPN2. New York survived their game three challenge from Indiana at Madison Square Garden. Now Houston on their home court, getting... Yet another challenge from Utah in what's been a terrific series, and it's been a terrific game so far. One-point game here in the first half. Well, it has. Utah's done a great job defensively. Cheryl Swoops 0 of 6 so far, as you said, and Tina Thompson just 2 of 6. Dedek has been there to help out every opportunity. Arcane short, follows a shot, and they'll reset. Utah's doing a great job of knowing where Swoops is at all times. Yeah, it's like a magnet 
As soon as Swoop moves, there's two Utah Stars bodies right there. Can Williams hurt Utah? No. And here comes Utah the other way with Samika Randall off the bench taking up the court and drawing the foul. Arcane whistled for the foul, her first. Samika Randall acquired by the Stars for Kate Starbird and Seattle. They did a trade and she put in some big minutes. A veteran out of Tennessee, not afraid to take it coast to coast. Daisy for Ferdinand. One point lead for Utah. Williams has been the go-to player so far. Ferdinand, silky smooth for two. Well, she has such a nice soft touch in that time. Williams was double teamed by Thompson and Swoops. Ferdinand not afraid to take it. Three-point Utah lead. Here's Michelle Snow. Arcane, Tina Thompson. Thompson taking it, spinning for two. Natalie Williams fouled out at the last game here in Houston, but those two are battling it out every single time down. They're, they're very similar in build. They're both very strong. It's a battle down in the post between Thompson and Williams. Dita hands off to Randall, looking for her first points of the playoffs. She has them. The lead back to three for Utah. Again, Utah doesn't get a lot of production from their bench, so they have to be happy with that as Randall comes in and finally able to score. Last touch by Williams. Ticked out of bounds will be Houston ball, and now the officials are going to talk it over one more time. Well, Eric, I, thought Willi I thought Williams touched it and sent it out of bounds. It should be Houston ball. That's what the officials are saying. Kenny Harvey questioning the call. I've seen that a couple times here in the first half. <laughs> now Utah will get it back. Foul on Houston. Well, how big was that basket by Samika Randall? She came off the bench to score it. First bench points in two games. The bench did not score for Utah in the last game. That's the first bench points since game one out of the Delta Center. Yeah, and again, that's something that they're going to have to have if they're going to be able to beat this team. They need more than just one or two players scoring. Randall for Ferdinand. Ferdinand gets it back to Williams. Williams has been doing it inside. Can't do it outside. Michelle Snow has the rebound. Williams just waited too long that time. Tina Thompson got a piece of it. But both teams looking to run at every single opportunity. There's Swoops, baseline, found Snow open at her time. Snow has struggled. One of 11 from the floor heading into this game, but took her time, took side of the basket, and knocked down her first two. She's really done some other things, though. She's been big defensively, nine rebounds in the last game. She had a couple of blocked shots, so she's trying to pick it up in other areas, but you're right, she has definitely struggled in the scoring category. I think she's going to pick up that personal foul. Her number's coming up as far as minutes played. She averaged 15 minutes a game in the regular season, but in the playoffs, averaging 25 minutes. And she is a presence. She's out there defensively with Margot Didek. There's a big height advantage for Didek. I mean, who doesn't have a height advantage when it comes to facing long arms at 6'5", with long arms, the rookie out of Tennessee this past season, and she's done a great job, but Natalie Williams has also really been picking up her game. This is a player that's been very up and down over the season, but as of late, become very consistent, and Adrian Goodson will come back in. She picked up those two quick personals early on. Daisy played all 40 in game one, had foul trouble in game two. She gets a rest still looking for her first points, although she does have four assists. Again, the three-point lead for Utah. Swoops. Swoops on the pull-up. That's short. Snow back to Swoops. Underneath her first two. Perfect read by Cheryl Swoops. She was on the left side. She saw Dita coming over, so she went up with the reverse. Got herself to the right side to put it in. That was a smart play. Cheryl missed her first seven from the floor. Made that one, and now she has a steal. Swoops makes the pass to Arcane. Too strong. Williams on the follow-up. She's fouled by Randall over the back. That's 
what happens sometimes. There's really not a true point guard out there right now for Utah. And Jennifer Azey has to sit down. Randall very capable of taking care of the ball as well as Goodson and Ferdinand. But that turnover leads to more opportunities for Houston. They did a great job in running the court and following it up. Swoops gets the screen from Snow. Now she's feeling it. They need her to do more of that. They've fallen back now into a zone as well. Second three of the playoffs for Swoops. Two-point lead for the Comets. Stars working inside out with Dedek. It puts it back to Dedek. Snow there to try to shut her off. They need to change your shot. They go down. Battle in the corner. Utah ball. Cheryl Swoop said the team that got after the loose ball, the team that hit the floor more would win. Well, Swoops is scoring, trying to help our team. Here, game three. You're part of a team. It isn't just about getting your job done. It's about working together as a unit, helping others reach their potential. And it's about fulfilling the dreams of those that count on you. At AIG Valak, our client's success is our top priority. As a leader in retirement products and services, AIG Valak has everything our customers need to achieve their retirement dreams. AIG Valak, official sponsor of the WNBA and a partner in your future. What do women really want? Oh, the usual thing. Jewelry. Moisturizers. Bags. If you're a woman with a passion to play, then call now. Your magazine has arrived. Sports Illustrated Women. Tone up and fuel up. Cool style and great gear. And now a special offer for WNBA fans. Call now for a free preview issue. 1-800-I-WANT-IT. Get Sports Illustrated Women. Live it. Back to life, back to reality, back from the fantasy, yeah, tell me how, take the initiative, I'll leave it in your hands. Treat yourself well every day with the pure fresh taste of Dasani. Excuse me, madam. Want to guess how much energy this complex machine uses? The latest from Kenmore Elite. Here, groceries level in their ideal climates. And ice storage in the door gives you more room to indulge your passions. How power hungry is this machine? No more than a 75 watt bulb. Brilliant. You know, I love my day job. But this fall, I'm working nights. Oprah, after the show, premieres Monday, September 16th, only on Oxygen. Cummins by two here, 3.38 to go in the first half. Coming up on the AIG Valak Halftime Report, Mark Morgan will wrap up the New York-Indiana game. He'll be joined in studio by the Shocks and Swin Cash, and we will sit down with WNBA President Val Ackerman, who's sitting down and enjoying this game. Get her thoughts on tonight's matchup. That's all coming up on the AIG Valak Halftime Report. That is a great job. Come out, present beautiful trophy to Cheryl Swoop. Come enjoy the game. Great. Come on to us. I mean, what more could you want? All the perks. All the perks, I'm sure. That's all she has to do, I bet. <laughs> Williams. AZ back in there for Utah. Swoops turning around. Down it. And one. And she is heating up. And one. And a little emotion from both the bench and Cheryl Swoops herself. It has been difficult for her to find the opening. But that time she had Randall on her, no help side, able to get to her. And that's a tough shot, turning around, fading away, getting it to go. Missed her first seven, made her last three, and converts on the three-point play. Just like that. Swoops with eight points. They're going to have to do a better job than you saw stars are as far as the double teaming on Cheryl Swoops. Push her out, away from the basket. That's exactly 
exactly part of Van Chancellor's game plan. Keep Zedek away from the hoop. Don't let her work inside. Good work defensively that time by Houston. Well, Houston out on a run now. And a lot of it has to do with the fact they're forcing Utah to take some shots they don't want to take. And they're forcing some turnovers, getting some transition buckets. Speaking of transition, here comes Goodson in transition for Utah. Looking for some help. Easy. Passed on the shot. Takes it back to Goodson for two. That ends an 8-0 run for Houston. They had jumped up to a five-point lead, their largest of the game. It's now back to three for the Comets. Nice job by Utah. Good ball movement that time. The dribble penetration opened up Goodson and a nice shot touch. First field goal for Goodson. She missed her first five. Swoops inside Rita Williams. Dedek stuck the foot out there. No call. Now Snow on the free throw line. Oh, she's two for two. She was working on her shot this morning. And she just looks very poised, very calm, and she knocks it down. Both teams have to be happy. They're getting their points from the bench players. It's just an extra bonus, and if they can get some hot hands going with some of the starters, they're going to have a much better opportunity. Goodson trying to create. She does that so well, but ran out of real estate on the baseline, stepped out of bounds, and Houston takes over. Adrian Goodson saying, I got pushed. Please look for it. She's trying to get her team fired up, but the Comets have really picked up the intensity in this crowd. has just been incredible. They've really gotten behind their team. Van Chancellor using his timeout here in the first half. Full timeout. His team up by five with a minute 43 to go in the first half. Adrian Goodson was not happy with the last call. She's just trying to get her team fired up a little bit. It, this is such a close contest and really no reason to be upset with themselves this early on. So as they talk it over, we can talk about the show everyone's been talking about. It's almost here. Oprah after the show. Oprah Winfrey's brand new series on oxygen. She's kicking off her shoes, kicking back with her audience, and really fishing. See what happens when the cameras keep rolling during Oprah after the show, premiering Monday, September 16th at 7.30, 6.30 Central, only on oxygen. Should be fun. I thought she did that anyway. I can only imagine. <laughs> now, this is when she really kicks back. This is when she really kicks the shoes off. Well, there's... No relaxing here in this building for either team, for the fans, because just getting a taste of the intensity that was here in game two, and well, some of the attire, obviously, but game two was a great game. And talking to some of the people here before the game, it was one of the best games they'd ever seen in the WNBA, and this team has been involved in some pretty good games, four-time WNBA champion. Well, it has a lot of it due to this player, Cheryl Swoops. In front of she's coming on here in late. Struggled early on, but she's really picked things up, and they are very proud of their MVP. Hey, hey, hey. Talk to me right here. I want to make sure I get it So in. what is the MVP of the Defensive Player of the Year, each before a third and decisive game here in 2002? Oh, bananas. Lately, yeah. <laughs> Not bananas. a whole lot. Just a lot of potassium. Got to get the bananas and a lot of water. She is an admitted junk food junkie. So she's had to go away from fast food and soft drinks and had nothing but sports drinks and water and bananas. This could be a good thing for her. Got to find the positives. I think this could be a good thing for Cheryl Cruz. Well, now you can see she was wearing a little wrap on her right calf. Now she's got it heavily taped. We haven't seen any real work done on that calf like we saw in game two. So it's holding up so far. Rita Williams open again. This time it won't go. Didek has the rebound. 124 to go, first half. Five-point lead for the Comets. Ferdinand. Utah looks a little confused on this set right here. Ferdinand trying to get everybody in order. AZ tries to work it into Randall. Williams picks up the loose ball. Her shot's challenge is short. Look at Randall battling inside. And she draws the foul. And Candy Harvey liking it. She loves the effort right there from Samika Randall. That was an aggressive play. She just would not give up on it. She followed it perfectly. Natalie Williams with the shot clock winding down just could not get enough behind it. But Randall finds the opening. That's just great effort. And gets the foul. 
So Randall on the line, Adrian Goodson on the bench. She has those two fouls, so Candy Harvey going to try to keep her out of further danger here in the final minute of the first half. Randall again out of Tennessee. They acquired her from Seattle, part of the 98 NCAA champs. And a big defensive stopper in her college days. She's done a pretty good job here so far tonight. Four points for Randall. Williams with the ball. Started tightly by Azy. Now Swoops. Long range three on the way. And Tina Thompson knocked it down. That is Tina Thompson's signature shot. This player, she's first in playoff games. She's been in 21 playoff games, the most minutes of any player in the WNBA. She's played some big games, and this crowd comes to life. Arcade challenging Ferdinand. 14 on the shot clock. AZ thought about it. Back to Ferdinand. She'll try the three. No good. Look at Randall battling again. Out to AZ. Fresh shot clock. It's actually turned off, but AZ finds Williams inside for two. Excellent read that time by the Stars. Now Thompson down to five seconds in the first half. Arcade realizes it now, throws up a shot. That's off the mark. Williams got there to throw it up before the buzzer sounded. And that's the end of the first half. Good bucket there for Utah to close out the half as Natalie Williams on the scramble got the two. And that makes it a four-point game here at the break. That's the end of the first half with the score. Houston 37, Utah 33. Let's send it out to Mark Morgan in our Sakaka studios for the AIG Valak Halftime Report. Thank you very much. Coming up on the AIG Valak Halftime Report, we will hear from the victorious New York Liberty as they advance to the Eastern Conference Finals. The Detroit Shocks win cash. will also join me live in the studio. It's all next on the AIG Valak Halftime Report. Fun. <laughs> hey, would you be my big, strong watchdog and guard my Bud Light for like this to the ladies' room? Woof. Mm. Woof, baby. <laughs> hey, that's it. Hey, hey, go. Go, go. Oh, you got moves. You got moves. Stop. Go, go, go. go. Taste it won't fill you up and never let you down. Make it a Bud Light. It ain't that bad. Copyrighted telecasts of WNBA Enterprises may not be retransmitted, reproduced, rebroadcast, or otherwise used in any form without the express written consent of WNBA. In her groundbreaking series on oxygen, Candace Bergen asks the tough questions. Are sex toys the Tupperware of the new millennium? The revealing questions. Am I the only one left who doesn't have a tattoo? Ow. The important questions. <laughs> if people are freeze-drying their dead pets, are plumbers and accountants next? Candace checks it out Sunday night at 9.30. If curiosity killed the cat, I need it to be freeze-dried. <laughs> Only on oxygen. When I was born, my mother named me Seema, which means limited. As with most girls in the village, my life was limited. Then one day, a healthcare worker came who taught us about family planning and health. And I began to see new possibilities. I chose to have fewer children and I chose to name my youngest daughter a theme, which means unlimited. Education is food for a child's mind. It brings forth genius into reality. The children of the victims of September 11th need a college education. And you can help. The Families of Freedom Scholarship Fund will help assure that these children receive that education. Call 1-800-335-1102 now. 
Hi, I'm Margaret, and this is my story. One day at school, this boy tried to get me to cut class with him. Come on, we'll go chill. I can't, I have a math test. Wait here, I'll be right back. It sounded fun, and I really liked him, but I thought about what my friends at Girls Inc. would say. Hey, Margaret, what's going on? Mike wants me to skip. You're going to ditch? Don't let anyone pressure you. You can make your own decision. Girls Inc., inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Welcome to the AIG Valak Halftime Report. Now here's your host, Mark Morgan. Welcome back to the AIG Valak Halftime Report. I'm Mark Morgan. At the intermission, it's the Houston Comets leading the Utah Stars by a score of 37-33. Earlier this evening, the New York Liberty advanced to the second round with an impressive 75-60 decision over the Indiana Fever. Let's take a quick look at the highlights. From that game, we go to Madison Square Garden. That is Rookie of the Year, Tamika Catchings of the Fever. She was pretty good early on. Look at the straightaway three. Got it. 12-2 Indiana. They were up at 1.17-2. Led it at the half by four. But second half, here come the Liberty. Vicki Johnson up court to Crystal Robinson for the three. Patrick Ewing liking that. It was New York's first lead of the game, 36-35. Teresa Weatherspoon to Vicki Johnson for the wide open triple. 43-36 New York on top. Weatherspoon to Vicki Hammond. Another triple. 56-44 New York. College teammates there, Tamika Williams and Sue Bird, they played together at UConn. They were in the crowd to watch the Liberty win, 75 to 60. Five Liberty players scored in double figures. Here were the thoughts from both coaches following the contest. I don't know how many teams um, can get a 17 to 2 lead, right, and then have the other team come back and start to go ahead and really keep their composure. I don't even I, I, I don't even know if veteran teams can do that. You know, you have a full sense of security, and when you jump out. And the other thing is, they just did it to us two games ago. And when they did it to us, they wound up beating us by 20 or whatever. You know, we never got back in it. So I think the fact that we did get back in it is more a credit to our veterans than, than to them. Well, I'm really proud of, of our team. I thought, um, you know, the way we ended our season, nobody really expected anything out of us this year. I thought we fought hard to get where we are. And we have, you know, a lot to build on. And... Um, you know, just sorry we couldn't take it a step far further. But we started the game very well. I thought we had a good game plan. And, um, you know, but New York's veterans really stepped up when they had to. And I thought that was the difference in the game in the second half. Um, their veterans played, and they played very well. All right, I'm now joined by Swin Cash of the Detroit Shock. Swin, what were your thoughts about uh, tonight's game? New York falling behind big early. Why were they able to come back? We well, you know what, like I said, Mark, New York's a veteran team, but the key to this game tonight was New York slowed down Tamika Catchings, and that's one thing they couldn't do in the first two games. And offensively, they're a coach's dream. Tonight, I mean, you had Teresa Weatherspoon in double figures, Becky Hammond, you had Vicki Johnson on the outside scoring, and Whitmore was dominating inside. So that was the key to tonight, to this victory. All right, Swin, thank you very much. It is halftime in Houston. When we return, we will send it back down to the Compact Center, where WNBA Commissioner Val Ackerman is standing by for a live interview. You're watching the AIG Valak Halftime Report. Hi, can I help you? Yeah, I think I'm starting to go bald. Yeah, well, that happens to the best of us. <laughs> Don't worry, uh, we'll take care of it for you. Now at Sears Auto Center, we're introducing three new tires at the lowest sale prices of the season. America's number one tire store. Sears. Where else?
kid in this world deserves a chance to succeed. Pedals? Good, keep going. That's why American Express is proud to partner with the WNBA and its Read to Achieve program, a literacy initiative that encourages reading. By supporting this cause, American Express and the WNBA are providing young people with the chance to dream about their future and the tools to make those dreams come true. The magic? Read to Achieve. Learn more about how American Express and the WNBA are supporting literacy by logging on to AmericanExpress.com. I'm just not good with the ladies like you said, Rick. All right. Try this on her. Hi, I'm Paul. You have beautiful eyes. Uh, hi, I'm Paul, and you have beautiful eyes. I'd love to take you out sometime. Love to take you out sometime. So how much? So how much? With a great taste that won't fill you up and never let you down, make it a Bud Light. Tomorrow on Movies at Oxygen, her steamy private affair, package for Ann Dembski, Thank you. is about to go very public. Like no right to videotape me. You sure picked a weirdo. You know what time this is. Don't miss this frightening thriller. Leave me alone. He tried to run down my wife and my little girl. Sometimes there are worse things than getting caught in the act. I want it to be over. No! Join Movies at Oxygen for Overexposed tomorrow at 8. We're back here in Houston, halftime, game three between the Comets and the Stars. It's been a great one. It's been a great series. The Comets on top by four. We're joined now by, well, we were joking before, Val Ackerman. We had a picture of you in the stands, and we said, well, what a great job this is. You know, you go watch great games, you present a trophy before the game. I mean, it's a beautiful life, isn't it, for you? That's absolutely the best part of the job, to come out and to watch our team play, and to get a player like Cheryl Swift an award, a very well-deserved award, and, and really, this is the most exciting time of the year for us. You know, Val, there's been a lot of different teams in the playoffs this season. We've seen a lot of new faces. How happy are you with the growth and with the league right now? Well, I think it's really one of our best storylines that, that every year we can expect great players to come into the league. We've had an incredible rookie class this year. Players like Tamika Catchings and Stu Bird in their way are, are really reflective of a new generation of players. But to see veteran players like Cheryl Swoop and Natalie Williams and Lisa Leslie come in year in and year out and show what they can do as well, I think really speaks to just the quality of player that we have at every level in the WNBA. Well, it's been a great got quality players in this game here today. Enjoy the second half, and thank you for your time. That's Val Ackerman from the WNBA. We're going to send it back down to our Secaucus studios here as we continue at halftime. Back to Mark Morgan with Houston on top by four. Mark. Thank you very much. Welcome back to the AIG Valak Halftime Report. I'm Mark Morgan alongside Forward Swin Cash of the Detroit Shock. Swin, uh, Houston with a four-point lead at the break. Who, in your opinion, wins this game and why? Well, both teams started out pretty slow, but right now, I would have to say, I'm going to go with Houston. They have the crowd behind them down there. The big three are playing really well right now. And down the stretch, Utah has to make shots if they want to win this game. But I have to go with Houston because they're playing really well. And they're probably a little more experienced come play. A little more experienced. Too. They're a veteran team. And I think if you're going to stay close down there in Houston, they're going to pull it out. All right, Swing, thank you very much. The second half will tip off shortly in Houston after a break. We'll return you to the Compact Center. This has been the AIG Valak Halftime Report. This has been the AIG Valak Halftime Report. What do women really want? Oh, the usual thing. Jewelry. Moisturizers. Bags. If you're a woman with a passion to play, then call now. Your magazine has arrived. Sports Illustrated Women. Tone up and fuel up. Cool style and great gear. And now a special offer for WNBA fans. Call now for a free preview issue. 1-800-I-WANT-IT. Get Sports Illustrated Women. Live it. Andrea Sondrio's mother is a survivor. For 10 years, Ivis Sampaio has been living with breast cancer. Ashley Laylock was nine when her mother started the fight. The risk of getting breast cancer is a common tie among all women. So practice good breast health by having yearly mammograms, regular doctor's exams, and self-exams. This will improve your chances of finding breast cancer at a treatable stage. There is living proof. The WNBA and its players support breast health awareness in NABCO. Next on Oxygen, there are so many questions that leave you scratching your head. And what started out as fun and games now just has you puzzled. Of course, you've never asked for help. That would be cheating. But a few little hints couldn't hurt, especially from the lady with all the answers. 
so suck it up and get help, because there's nothing more frustrating than an empty box. <laughs> the Sunday Night Sex Show. Tune in every night, including Sunday, to learn the ins and outs of what's keeping you up at night. Oh, yeah. Hi, I'm Deidre, and this is my story. I didn't want to wear my bathing suit in front of everyone in gym class. Sitting there, I thought to myself, what would my friends from Girls Inc. say? Hey, DJ, what's up? Hi. Look at me nice woman. I don't look good in a bathing suit. It doesn't matter what you look like. It matters what you feel like. You're not going to sit on the sideline your whole life, are you? Come on, girl, let's go. Girls Inc., inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. Education is food for a child's mind. It brings forth genius into reality. The children of the victims of September 11th need a college education. And you can help. The Families of Freedom Scholarship Fund will help assure that these children receive that education. Call 1-800-335-1102 now. My hope is that one day we will do more for the people of developing nations by answering the cry for family planning services. And one day, there will no longer be a third world. There will only be one world. We've had lead changes of plenty in the first half here in Houston. Right now, Houston on top by four at halftime. Houston led by six in the first half. Utah led by four. Those were the biggest leads in the first half. Back here with Chris Blanc. And it was back and forth right to the very end there at the first half. Looked like Houston was trying to take a little momentum, but Utah got a key basket late to kind of stem that tie. Yeah, they definitely cut that lead down, but Houston really picked things up defensively. The intensity was impressive. They forced six turnovers for the Utah Stars, and the Stars giving up five points off of those. But you can see most other areas are pretty much even. The Stars even out-rebounded the Comets. But really, I think the turnovers, the big difference, and Houston got out on some fast break opportunities there late in the first half. The numbers, it was Natalie Williams who came up with that late hoop for Utah, leading all scores with 15 points. Dedek was two of six from the floor in the first half. Tina Thompson leading the way for Houston. She was four of eight. Cheryl swooped three of ten, missed her first seven shots, but then made three in a row to close out the half. And we're set to start half number two here at the Compact Center in Houston. The winner moves on to the Western Conference Finals to take on the L.A. Sparks. Utah won game one on their home floor. Houston, one game two and double overtime here on their home floor. 20 minutes or more left to go here in this series. That was Utah's first playoff win ever. That win at home. They went to the playoffs last season and lost to the Sacramento Monarchs 0-2. So the veterans now, their second year into the playoffs. But off the tip, even though Utah won it, Cheryl Swoops proving why she is the defensive player of the year, came back. Knock Goodson shot away, and here comes Houston with Henning running the point to start the second half, and Michelle Snow getting a start here in the second half. That's the same thing that happened in game two. Snow started the second half. Dan Chancellor like what he saw from Snow. Now Henning's going to get a second opportunity, but Rita Williams has come in in that first half and really put in some big minutes. Rita Williams played 15 minutes at the point in the first half. Five for Henning. With this crowd trying to get into it, pick up their Comets. Utah mixing things up offensively. Candy Harvey was shaking her head. She wasn't happy with what was going on in this half-court set. You know Goodson definitely was frustrated. She picked up the two early fouls. Didn't seem to be able to get into her rhythm. But you can tell, just looking at her face, she's trying to get that rhythm back here in the second half. Yeah, she was very serious, very focused here starting out in the second half. Battle on the floor and jump ball coming. That was great help side D. Van Chancellor didn't think so, but he wanted a cleaner pass. 
from his, from his players, but great help side D. Natalie Williams, top side, tipped it away, and Marie Ferdinand reading it perfectly. She came over to help out. Off the jump, Goodson gets over, and here comes Utah with the ball down by two. Easy. Held scoreless in the first half, just took one shot. One of our storylines coming into this game, did not score in game two. Tidek, working on Snow. Moves to the middle. Third hoop of this game for Margot Tidek. She has seven. And Eric, that was a tough shot. Margo did it. There was some contact. She faded away in the lane. Snow's doing everything she can to try to keep Dedek out of the lane. She did a pretty good job, but there's not much you can do against that little fadeaway shot. 37 all. Arcane. Menning. Swoops. It's by Ferdinand. Pulls up for two more. Well, Swoops Henning, in the double digits. He was open. Didn't know it. But it didn't matter. Swoops. Starting off right off the bat here in the second half. She's made four in a row. Ferdinand back to Dedek. Puts it on the floor. Rebound Snow. Here's Swoops. She wants to push it. Takes it up Ferdinand. Snow. Foul by Dedek. Dedek tried to help out on Cheryl Swoops as she drove. So then she lost her, to her player, Michelle Snow. Just could not recover. She knew she was going to foul on that one, but she had to stop that open shot. Second personal foul on Margot Dedek. Rita Williams quickly into this game in the second half, just like she was in the first half as Sonia Henning sits down. Now Michelle Snow steps to the line to shoot two. Michelle Snow, 6'5", out of Tennessee this past year. Part of that rookie class that Val Ackerman was talking about. Such an impressive player. It's tough to be a big-time rookie, though, on a team like the Houston Comets when there are so many huge players. But Van Chancellor's given her a lot of minutes and some opportunities, and I think he's very happy, and he could not believe that he was able to pick her up in the draft when he did. Well, she makes a couple of free throws. She has five rebounds here in this game so far. And that was one of the keys for Candy Harvey in Utah. They thought Snow really killed them on the board, picking up nine rebounds off the bench in game number two. And in the words of Harvey, that's nine second chances for the big three. So Snow making her presence felt in this game. She just kept saying it over and over again. She said, Margo, take it up strong. And she also <laughs> said, nine rebounds for Snow. That can't happen. Smart play, Swoops comes over for the help, and there was no doubt she was not going to let Margot Dedek have that easy shot. Second foul for Swoops. Dedek misses the first of two from the line. Seven and seven for Dedek. No blocks yet in this game. She has nine in the series. She led the league in blocks per game, just under four per game. League leader in blocks for four years running. Yeah. Here's Williams, AZ out there defensively. Utah really extending the defense. Snow to Williams, that's short. Here's Ferdinand. Numbers aren't here for Utah, but that hasn't stopped Marie Ferdinand before, and she takes it to the basket for two. When she looks at the official, she wanted a foul. How impressive was Marie Ferdinand? There were three Thomas players ahead of her. And I thought there's no way she has the numbers on this. And she just explodes and makes it a one-on-one -on -one situation. That's the stars whose star is on the rise in the WNBA. No question about it. Had a great rookie season. Following that up with a terrific second season. And stepping forward here in the playoffs. She's just explosive. Such quickness. The foot speed. It's just amazing. Thompson, a little head fake. Ferdinand pulls down the rebound. Edek couldn't get it. Ferdinand did. And look at the running here. Quickson couldn't handle it. Houston ball. Hart came with a fist pump again. It all started because of her. That time she blocked the vision of Goodson. Got in the way just in time to force that turnover. Easy out to walk Williams into the front court. Houston by one, second half, game three of the best of three. Swoops 
Ferdinand there swoops, gets some space, and makes another one. That's five in a row from the floor for Cheryl Swoops. There's no doubt there was some contact. Cheryl Swoops might have pushed off a little bit, but hey, Marie Ferdinand needs to figure out that the MVP's not going to get very many of those calls against her. 12 for Swoops. Now the leading score for Houston. Ferdinand for Dedek. Hands held high, couldn't get it to go, but there is a foul on Houston inside. Dedek is such a big target with her hands above her head. She'll go to the free throw line, but it's Cheryl Swoops that's heating up here in hot Houston. Comments up by three. Gets it up to Leslie. They got them for the first time in WNBA history. Every kid in this world deserves a chance to succeed. Adults? Good, keep going. That's why American Express is proud to partner with the WNBA and its Read to Achieve program, a literacy initiative that encourages reading. By supporting this cause, American Express and the WNBA are providing young people with the chance to dream about their future and the tools to make those dreams come true. The magic? Read to Achieve. Learn more about how American Express and the WNBA are supporting literacy by logging on to AmericanExpress.com. was diagnosed at 24. Ashley Laylock was nine when her mother started the fight. The risk of getting breast cancer is a common tie among all women. That's why Sears and the WBA want everyone to know that early detection through yearly mammograms, regular doctor visits, and self-exams will improve your chances of finding breast cancer at a treatable stage. Sears will surpass its pledge to donate $1 million to help the fight against breast cancer. Sears, proud sponsor of the WNBA and the Breast Health Awareness Program. The smooth ride of a luxury car. The seating capacity of a minivan. Capabilities of an SUV. All in one totally innovative package. Introducing the all new 2002 Buick Rendezvous. What? You were expecting Igor? <laughs> Buick Rendezvous. It's all good. What one thing would you do to make the world a better place? I do my very best to make sure that every time you ever witness a woman in the media, it would be sure to reveal her true complexity. It's not just the same old stereotypes that do an incredible disservice to all humanity. Oxygen, on TV and online. The Oxygen Network presents this helpful hint for mom, the flip side of nightmares. When your child wakes up with a bad dream, have her turn over the pillow so she can start a fresh dream. This seems to wake her up out of the dream long enough to change her dream pattern. It also gives her a feeling of control over her dreams. Parenting is tricky, but Oxygen helps make it easier. You've reached Oxygen. Please begin watching after the beep. Oh! Happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. <laughs> hey, girl, it's us. We just want to wish you and your husband Spanky the best luck. She's not married to Spanky anymore. She's married to Krabby. Oh, my, I'm so sorry. <laughs> girl, please erase the tape. We don't want him crabbing out on you us. You got that right. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Bye. Bye. Oxygen, we got your message. Oh. The Oxygen Network presents this helpful hint for mom, jail or bail. In our house, when kids leave their toys and clothing lying around everywhere, the offending items have to go to jail. Mostly, we deal with shoes left all around, so I put a note on the shoe that says, Help! I'm in shoe jail. The children then have the choice of letting it serve out its time or bailing it out by doing a chore of my choice. Parenting is tricky, but oxygen helps make it easier. Well, we're
we're back here in Houston right now in a tragic turn of events here at the Compact Center. Referee Bill Stokes uh, is being attended to by paramedics and medical staff here at the Compact Center. He collapsed during that timeout in front of the scores table. The teams are being sent to their locker rooms. The fans here at the Compact Center are being asked to sit down. It is some anxious moments here, so as the teams head to the locker room, we'll get you updated here in Houston as we go along. We'll be back in a moment. I am an honorary woman. Oh, oh my God. God. Oh my God. So good. So when I can point something fabulous out to a real woman, I waste absolutely no time. You have two different breasts, by the way. All girls have two different breasts. Mm -hmm. Sarah Jessica Parker took the news surprisingly well. Did you realize well, that? fantastic news. Right. <laughs> so I took it one step further. She named them. Like that one's Sarah, that one's Jessica. Oh, I think this one deserves Sarah, to be Jessica. Sarah. You know, your husband has names for things. I want you to name yours. Have fun. You've reached oxygen. Please begin watching after the beep. Listen to this nightmare. The kids leave the front door open. Samson runs out, parks the spot on the yellow dotted line. The kids are screaming. The bus is coming. I run back in. I get a hot dog. So Laura, I'm back in. So can you see me on the street waving a raw hot dog in my fuzzy robe? This motherhood thing, I don't know. Oxygen, we got your message. Here's the Isaac moment for today. My favorite saying in the world, it gets me through my life. Just looking. I say just looking to take all the responsibility off everything. Like I'm just looking, just looking, just looking, and then finally you do something. Just looking, just looking, just looking. This helps everyone feel more at ease, even Broadway divas. Just looking, just looking, just okay, looking. Okay, just looking. So anytime you're not sure of anything, just tell yourself, just okay. looking, just looking. You'll see, it just puts you right at ease. Another moment, thank you. The Oxygen Network presents this helpful hint for mom, reflecting tantrum. When my three-year-old starts throwing a tantrum, I calmly take him to the full-length mirror in his bedroom. I have him stand in front of it so he can see how he looks during his tantrum. He'll usually stop crying and start laughing, giving me time to figure out any appropriate discipline while he's calm. Parenting is tricky, but Oxygen helps make it easier. We're back in Houston. The game certainly in the back, the far recesses of everyone's minds right now as referee Bill Stokes is being attended to by paramedics. Medical staff here at the Compact Center, he collapsed during the last time out. Uh, they've been working feverishly on the sidelines. The fans here stunned uh, as, frankly, we are right here at courtside. Um, I really, quite frankly, don't know what to say. The teams have been sent off to their locker room. Uh, they're trying to regroup. They're very emotional about this. Certainly an emotional moment for everyone here, and we certainly hope the best for Bill Stokes. And if we have any information or any update on his condition, we'll, we'll pass it along to you as soon as possible. But the attention continues, and the fans here in Houston and the prayers continue here in Houston, certainly. Houston on top by three, but basketball will have to wait here at the Compact Center. We're going to send it back to Mark Morgan in Secaucus for more and as soon as we have an update mark we'll be back here in Houston but r right now to you welcome back to our Secaucus New Jersey studios I'm Mark Morgan obviously a very serious serious situation there in Houston at the compact center uh, just over 15 and a half minutes to go in the second half of that game between the stars and the comets an official has collapsed on the court both teams have been sent to their respective locker rooms right now Houston leads the game 43 to 40 obviously we will revisit that situation a very serious uh, situation down there at the Compact Center. We'll have more on that as it develops, but right now the game is being suspended. Uh, one other game in the uh, WNBA tonight, a critical Game 3 at Madison Square Garden between the New York Liberty and the Indiana Fever. That game in the Eastern Conference playoffs. Let's show you some highlights from that game at uh, MSG. Tamika Catchings of the Indiana Fever prior to the game as she was Pretty hot early on. There's a three ball from straight away. Indiana led it 17 to two at one point. It led by four at the half. Liberty took the first lead of the night, 36-35 on that Crystal Robinson three in the second half. Former Nick Patrick Ewing watching from the seats at MSG. Teresa Weatherspoon to Vicki Johnson for the wide open triple. New York on top, 43-236. Weatherspoon to Becky Hammond 
for another three-pointer. College teammates at UConn, that was Tamika Williams on the left, Sue Bird on the right, Tamika Catchings and Tamika Whitmore hugging after the game. And uh, the Liberty hold on, and actually they roared away again. They were down 17-2 in this game. They roar away to a 15-point victory, 75-65. to Liberty players score in double figures. The Liberty advance to the second round of the Eastern Conference playoffs. Here's their head coach, Richie Adubato. problems there with uh, Richie Adubato, the New York Liberties head coach again at MSG this evening in the Eastern Conference uh, Finals, or rather the Eastern Conference first round uh, series playoffs. The Liberty wins it 75 to 60, and now we've corrected that uh, audio problem, and here is Coach Adubato. Five minutes to play. The big thing, the, the real, the most important thing was not to try and get it back all at once, which we did try to do a little earlier. And their game plan was to score, press, and fall back in his zone. And then when they miss, play a man. Well, they scored every single time. So all we saw was the press and the zone. And uh, um, we, we really kept our composure, which I was very happy about. Um, I thought VJ bounced back um, tremendously tonight. Uh, you know, shooting the ball. She was our leading rebounder. She was 8 for 14. She pushed the ball. She, she moved it against the press, and uh, she had six assists to turn, uh, two turnovers. I can't say, uh, I can't talk too much about Crystal Robinson and VJ on defense. Crystal Robinson had five points tonight because she's playing one of maybe the best player in the WNBA in catchings, and gave her 12 points and maybe made her earn every bit of it. And VJ switched off on her. Um, they're giving up pounds, they're giving up inches. They got a lot of heart. Uh, Crystal denied her the ball in a lot of situations. Uh, we played a, um, you know, a diamond and one on her sometimes, and DJ played her sometimes, um, and and that's what it takes. She's such an outstanding player. Um, Tamika came alive because what happens usually if you have two great games, you usually uh, come out and and don't shoot it real well, which she did early, but then she came back in the second half and really scored down in the low post. She did a good job. Um, Tari uh, and and. Um, Olympia Scott Richards were in a battle down inside. Um, it, it's incredible what goes on down in the low post in this league. Uh, Scott Richardson has long arms, as you know. She's very long, and those elbows are up the whole game. Um, uh, Tari must have got hit about ten times, and uh, you know it was going back and forth. Uh, but she got hit any number of times, uh, and then you know got into foul trouble, which kind of hurt us. Um, but Sue came off the bench and did a good job defensively, got us a few rebounds, and, and again, Becky was outstanding in coming off the bench and, and getting the crowd into the game and making big shots and, and helping us to get back in. So uh, all in all, um, it was a great comeback win, um, and we're very happy with it. I'm very happy with the team. Is that, yes. Is that Well, I think yeah, I think Indiana, um, and I don't know how many teams um, can get a 17 to two lead, right, and then have the other team come back and start to go ahead and really keep their composure. I don't even I I, I don't even know if veteran teams can do that. You know, you have a full sense of security, and when you jump out, and the other thing is they just did it to us two games ago, and when they did it to us. They wound up beating us by 20 or whatever. You know, we never got back in it. So I think the fact that we did get back in it is more a credit to our veterans than, than to them. Um, we may have demoralized them a little, um, but, you know, that can happen when, uh, number one, you had a big lead. Number two, all of a sudden we're coming back strong and then we're starting to run the break well, and the crowd is tremendous. The crowd was really into the game. They were really loud. Um, and I got a headache, um, but it's not from the crowd. It's from the one lady behind me. Who, uh, she's 
she got a voice I can't believe. I don't know who her husband is, but my God almighty, I don't know who she is. We got to get her a new seat. All right, so the Liberty advanced to meet Washington in the Eastern Conference Finals. That series begins Thursday at the MCI Center in D.C. Games 2 and then 3, if necessary, return to Madison Square Garden in New York. Now we're going to toss to a quick break right now. Following these commercial messages, we will return you to the Compact Center in Houston for the final 15 and a half minutes of that Game 3 between Utah and the Houston Comets. I'm too proud, I'm too strong Education is food for a child's mind. It brings forth genius into reality. The children of the victims of September 11th need a college education. And you can help. The Families of Freedom Scholarship Fund will help assure that these children receive that education. Call 1-800-335-1102 now. Hi, I'm Margaret, and this is my story. One day at school, this boy tried to get me to cut class with him. Come on, we'll go chill. I can't, I have a math test. Wait here, I'll be right back. It sounded fun, and I really liked him, but I thought about what my friends at Girls Inc. would say. Hey, Margaret, what's going on? Mike wants me to skip. You're gonna ditch? Don't let anyone pressure you. You can make your own decision. Girls Inc., inspiring all girls to be strong, smart, and bold. When I was born, my mother named me Sima, which means limited. As with most girls in the village, my life was limited. Then one day, a healthcare worker came who taught us about family planning and health, and I began to see new possibilities. I chose to have fewer children, and I chose to name my youngest daughter Asim, which means unlimited. We are back in Houston, 1533 left to go in the second half. Uh, the teams are back on the court and they are warming up. Bill Stokes, referee here in this game, one of three in this officiating crew, passed out during this timeout, the 16-minute timeout with 1533 to go. He was attended to immediately by medical personnel here. They are performing CPR. They took him off on a stretcher to rush him to a local hospital. We don't have any information beyond that, but during those moments after he was taken out of the arena. The fans had a moment of silence. Many joined in spontaneously reciting the Lord's Prayer. Others said prayers on their own. And then when the two teams came back out, Utah came out first. They were treated to a standing ovation. And then Houston came out and there was another standing ovation from the crowd here in Houston. So obviously we are going to play basketball. The teams are going to have a chance to warm up here for a few more minutes. And then we will resume game three of this Western Conference semifinals certainly with heavy hearts and we're certainly looking for more information on the condition of Bill Stokes. We'll take a break and come back and resume the game after this. What one thing would you do to make the world a better place? I do my very best to make sure that every time you ever, ever witness a woman in the media it would be sure to reveal her true complexity. It's not just the same old stereotype that do an incredible disservice to all humanity. on TV and online. The Oxygen Network presents this helpful hint for mom, the flip side of nightmares. When your child wakes up with a bad dream, have her turn over the pillow so she can start a fresh dream. This seems to wake her up out of the dream long enough to change her dream pattern. It also gives her a feeling of control over her dreams. Parenting is tricky, but oxygen helps make it easier. You've reached oxygen. Please begin watching after the beep. Oh, happy anniversary. Happy anniversary. Hey, girl, it's us. We just want to wish you and your husband thank you the best 
luck. She's not married to Spanky anymore. She's married to Krabby. Oh, my, I'm so sorry. <laughs> Girl, please erase the tape. We don't want him crabbing out on you us. You got that right. <laughs> Happy anniversary. Bye. Oxygen, we got your message. The Oxygen Network presents this helpful hint for moms, jail or bail. In our house, when kids leave their toys and clothing lying around everywhere, the offending items have to go to jail. Mostly, we deal with shoes left all around, so I put a note on the shoe that says, Help! I'm in shoe jail. The children then have the choice of letting it serve out its time or bailing it out by doing a chore of my choice. Parenting is tricky, but oxygen helps make it easier. I am an honorary woman. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. So good. So when I can point something fabulous out to a real woman, I waste absolutely no time. You have two different breasts, by the way. All girls have two different breasts. Sarah Jessica Parker took the news surprisingly well. Did you realize oh, that? Oh, fantastic news. Right. So I took it one step further. She named them. Like that one's Sarah, that one's Jessica. Oh, I think this one deserves Sarah to be Sarah. Jessica. You know, your husband has names for things. I want you to name yours. Have fun. You've reached Oxygen. Please begin watching after the beep. Listen to this nightmare. The kids leave the front door open. Samson runs out, parks the spot on the yellow dotted line. The kids are screaming. The bus is coming. I run back in. I get a hot dog to lure him back in. So can you see me on the street waving a raw hot dog in my fuzzy robe? This motherhood thing, I don't know. Oxygen, we got your message. Here's the Isaac moment for today. My favorite saying in the world, it gets me through my life. Just looking. I say just looking to take all the responsibility off everything. Like I'm just looking, just looking, just looking, and then finally you do something. Just looking, just looking, just looking. This helps everyone feel more at ease, even Broadway divas. Just looking, just looking, just okay, looking. Okay, just looking. So anytime you're not sure of anything, just tell yourself, just okay. looking, just looking. You'll see, it just puts you right at ease. Another moment, thank you. The Oxygen Network presents this helpful hint for moms, reflecting tantrums. When my three-year-old starts throwing a tantrum, I calmly take him to the full-length mirror in his bedroom. I have him stand in front of it so he can see how he looks during his tantrum. He'll usually stop crying and start laughing, giving me time to figure out any appropriate discipline while he's calm. Parenting is tricky, but Oxygen helps make it easier. Well, a very difficult evening here in Houston. The teams are on the floor here, and the fans are in their seats and waiting for basketball to resume. But obviously, very difficult right now to focus after referee Bill Stokes collapsed at midcourt during a timeout. He was attended to by medical staff immediately. They performed CPR in sight of these 9,000-plus fans here. Um, just a very very difficult thing to watch they took him out of the arena and we don't have a further update on the condition of one of the referees but obviously you can tell by the look on Tammy Reese's face some of these players having difficult time regrouping so the intention now is to resume this game but that's not happening yet we're going to take another break we'll be back to Houston with more information when we come back got anybody anywhere. At AIG, we believe the greatest risk is not taking one. The chills that you feel on my back keep me filled with satisfaction when we're done. Satisfaction of what's to come. See it, baby. I on the street when I hear funk beat. Baby, just sing about the groove. Sing it. Groove is in the heart. Treat yourself well every day for the pure, fresh taste of Dasani. Uh-huh. Yeah. 
yeah. Come on and shop with a ball of shot. Get on the court, see how much points you can drop. Uh -huh. Shoot so many threes, and the crossover buckle your knees like some kind of disease. Oh. I'm taking your cookies, embarrassing rookies, and I don't play fair. It's turf ball, and I hate the ground. I live in the air. I'm coming in wild, I'm drawing the fast. From the gym floors to the project. Matter of fact, that's game. Who got next? Nobody does in my house. Lisa Leslie with the rejection. Bud Light is proud to sponsor the WNBA. Excuse me, could you please pass the sugar? Ooh. Ooh. Get the scoop with the Sunday Night Sex Show. Then sit back for pure oxygen. Followed by the wild antics of Love American Style. Well, certainly some conflicted thoughts here. People want to celebrate and cheer on teams in a basketball game, but they're certainly thinking about Bill Stokes, the referee who passed out here at midcourt. The referees have returned to the floor. The other two referees here calling tonight's game, Lisa Mattingly and Roy Goban. And this was a moment ago as they came back they were out with their comrade, Bill Stokes. They received an ovation from the crowd here, and you can just barely see as Lisa went over and said, he's okay. And the report we have on Bill Stokes is that he is breathing in critical condition, but stable. That is the report we have right now is Bill Stokes is going to be transported to Methodist Hospital if he's not already en route to Methodist Hospital. And that announcement now being made to the crowd. So we will continue to play with two referees as Lisa Mattingly and Roy Gobayan will handle things here, but as they came on the floor, it was it was a scene as Van Chancellor and Candy Harvey came over, talked to them, patted them on the back, and tried to console and comfort them, but we're going to play basketball here. And getting a report that is, after what we saw, a little encouraging that he's being taken to the hospital and he was breathing, that has picked up the spirits here considerably in this arena, but certainly our thoughts and prayers continue to go with Bill Stokes and his family. If we get a further update, we'll let you know. We're back to playing basketball here, Krista. Yes, we are. You know, it's, it's tough. These players very emotional. Everyone very emotional, but they've regrouped. They're back out on the court, and the intensity continues as this is still a very close game. Comets 43, Stars 41. Game three of the best of three. Here's Williams. Finds a lane to the basket and lays it in. During that long stoppage, we saw coaches individually talking to players, and as a group, and game, the game was going to be played. It was going to resume, and they were trying to figure out ways to focus some of these players. Certainly difficult. Boy, but difficult. Natalie Williams is getting back into the groove. Yeah, that shot was very difficult. Natalie Williams, the double team, but right back at him, and this game just back and forth right now. The Williams at each end. Two-point game. Here is Swoops. She continues her torrid streak. After missing her first seven, she's made six in a row. Hosting shooting pretty well here to start off this second half. Entry pass to Dedek. No basket. Foul came before the shot. As Dedek, again, putting those hands up there, the big target. Got a hold of it. Tiffany Johnson picked up the foul. Well, her wingspan, she does a great job right here in sealing off. She got the inside position on Tiffany Johnson. Nothing Johnson could do to try to foul. Tidek finds Goodson. Goodson put it on the floor. She got it up. Didn't go, but she'll go to the line. And Eric, you can see Utah really setting the tone right now. They are coming out with a lot of energy after the timeout and really pushing things, trying to attack the Comets. So Goodson will go to the free throw line to shoot a couple. How do things change now for the officials? They go from three officials on the floor to two officials on the floor. Yeah, you know, they're, they're really, they got a lot of court to cover and a lot of areas, and the players are just going to have to be understanding that they're not going to be able to catch every single angle, but 
Lisa Mattingly, Roy Bayan, they've been in this league for a long time. Excellent officials, and I'm sure they're going to try to pick up the slack as best as they can and just alternate probably on both sides of the, of the court. Foul called after the missed free throw on Natalie Williams. I think that's a definite. They will be cut some slack, these two officials, and they certainly deserve it. Yeah, I think so. But it is a very physical game. you got to keep the game under control. Johnson. Out to Cheryl Swoops. Swoops trying it again. That's her first miss in quite a while. Easy picks it up. Dribbles out of trouble, and here she comes. Swoops almost forced her to turn the ball over. Natalie Williams inside for two more. She is so tough, so strong, and so crafty inside. Yeah, she's tough to guard. She's left-handed, and when she turns in, if she gets below the block, you might as well forget it. It's hard to, to bring her down. Arcane dished it off. Williams couldn't convert. Houston ball. Dan Chancellor has a couple of things to tell Rita Williams was not happy with that sequence, but he has to be happy with her overall play. She's really come in off the bench and produced. She's got nine points so far. Cheryl Swoop showing no effects of the calf problems that plagued her during game two. Here's Tina Thompson. That's too strong. And lost out of bounds. Last touch by Dedek. It's going to be Houston Ball. Boy, shots like that are impossible to rebound. Dedek was just standing there, and that one just bricked off the backboard, and it hit Dedek, bounced off of her, and in turn, Houston gets the ball back. Kelly Gibson checks in for the first time for Houston. She gave this team a spark off the bench in game two. Oh, yeah, she did. She came in, hit some big threes, seven points, three rebounds, but some big shots All late in the game. 14 minutes of yeah. seven points. Here's Thompson trying to get by Williams using her speed. That's off the rim, and here's Goodson, speaking of speed, trying to get a handle on the dribble. Rita Williams is back. Goodson with two fouls, put it on her hip, couldn't convert. If you can tell, Goodson wanted that shot. She saw Rita Williams. She knew it was a one-on-one -on -one situation. The veteran took it right in to Williams. Williams guarded by Williams. Johnson lost the handle. He that came out the challenge, and here's Marie Ferdinand. Dribbling through traffic, trying to take it all the way to the basket. And a foul called on Tiffany Johnson. The crowd not happy about it, but that was a smart play by Marie Ferdinand. As she got out on the break, she saw a much slower Tiffany Johnson in her path. So she took it in. She protects the ball with her body and is able to lean in just enough to draw some body contact. Ferdinand makes the first. Tiffany Johnson, who has her fourth personal, she really had a tough time tonight. Michelle Snow had played the majority of the second half of the, the first half, played the latter minutes. The Stars are back on top. They trailed by six, but here they are up by one. Short. Natalie Williams has Goodson taking off. She gets it to her. Ducks inside for two, and it's a three-point Utah lead. Great control right there by Goodson, and a nice look up court by Natalie Williams as she found her. And they think that they anticipate this crowd trying to get into this. Houston needs some help trying to get it from the crowd. Gibson picks up the loose ball, and Houston has another chance. Jennifer Aze, instead of grabbing that rebound, she batted it, trying to tip it over to one of her teammates, but gave Houston the second opportunity. Foul whistled on the Stars. That's their third team foul. Five team fouls on the Comets. We picked up the intensity. We've seen a couple of shots from Houston that they haven't really had good looks at. Tiffany Johnson, in particular, a couple of shots, trying to take it right into Margot Dedek. The odds are great. You're not going to be able to shoot over the long, arm, the long arms of Margot Dedek. Tina Thompson got tangled up with Natalie Williams, and Natalie gets whistled for the foul, which she doesn't agree with. At least she's smiling about it. <laughs> Let's take a look. Boy, she and Tina Thompson, they've been battling at it. I've seen a lot more contact out there in other, in other parts of this game, but nonetheless, a little shove in the back. Oops, oops.